Hello, and welcome to the University of Nebraska's P-Index tutorial. To begin, open your web browser and type in go.unl.edu slash p-index. About in the middle of the page, you will see a link called 2012 Nebraska P-Index. Click on it. The browser will ask you whether you want to open the file or save it. Click on Open File. When it opens, click on File, Save As to save the file as a different file name. I recommend the name of the farm or the field and the date you are running the p-index. In this case, I'm going to call the farm West Farm 10 30 12. Now, on to the actual use of the software. You may see a yellow bar across the top of your screen that says something about the file being downloaded from the internet. Go ahead and click Enable Editing. Then you'll get another yellow bar that says macros have been disabled, such as this. Click on Enable Content. The p-index will not work properly without those macros. Take time to read the instructions on the Help and Instructions tab at the bottom of your screen. To get started analyzing your field, click on the Nebraska P-Index tab. There are three different colored boxes that the data will be in. White boxes are the areas where you can enter actual data. The blue boxes are drop-down lists, and the yellow boxes are populated automatically based on other entries. Section 1 of the P-Index is general information about your field. My field name is West Farm. I'm going to enter whole farm as my option for this field because later I'm going to run a scenario on just a small part of the farm. The option names for your information if you want to try different scenarios on one field. I also am going to enter information about who is doing the analysis and for who. I'm doing this for the tutorial, so I'll enter that information in here. The next thing is to select your county where your farm is located. You can use the drop down box to enter your county. Then based on the county, you can select your landform region. Generally, there is only one landform region to choose from, but occasionally there will be more than one. If you need to figure out which one of those it is, click on find landform region. You'll be directed to this map where you can look for your approximate location of your field. For example, if your field is in Custer County, you can look about where that field is, and it may be in this purple area, which corresponds to landform area 4, or it may be in this gray area, which corresponds to landform number 7. Go ahead and click on the number that is appropriate for your field, and it will be automatically entered over into the Nebraska P-Index page. The next thing is to select your soil type. To select your soil type, you have two options. If you know the name of your soil type and your slope, you can select it from the drop-down list. However, I don't know the name of my soil type, but I do know that the map unit symbol is 6782, which turns out is a Nora Moody silty clay loam with 6 to 11 percent slopes. You also need to enter your soil test information in this section of the p-index. In my case, I have a result of 50 parts per million on a 0 to 8 inch sample and a Bray analysis was run on this particular soil test. Because in no-till, conservation till, or perennial vegetation, soil stratification occurs, you need to select the appropriate soil test depth so the program can adjust for this P stratification. The next section is the irrigation component. If you have no irrigation on your field, select None. If you have furrow irrigation on your field, you can choose from three options. When furrow irrigation is selected and not recaptured or polyacrylamide is not used, a blue box appears asking for the flow rate and furrow slope. The flow rate is per row. In this example, though, there is no irrigation, so I select None. The third section of the P-index is the solid manure component. 
If you are using liquid manure, you do not need to enter anything in this section. However, if you are using slurry or solid manure, this section is important because the organic matter in the manure improves soil structure, thereby decreasing erosion and runoff. So go ahead and figure out the total amount of manure applied and how often. For this example, we apply 25 tons of manure per acre annually, and then manure contains about 75% dry matter. If we applied manure every other year, but did it at a rate of 100 tons per acre, I would enter 100 in the application rate box and a 2 in the number of years. Moving on, the runoff component is developed. Select the appropriate cultural practices used on this field. In my case, the field is no-tilled and row crops are grown in straight rows and no contouring. We use a corn-soybean rotation that every four to five years is planted to alfalfa, so I'm going to select the alfalfa meadow high residue crop, low residue crop. Because of our manure use, we do not add any additional phosphorus, but I still need to account for the phosphorus in the manure. I calculate that we apply about 325 pounds of P2O5 per acre per year in our manure applications. Because this is a no-till system, it is not incorporated. So I'm going to select surface application, no incorporation. To calculate the erosion component of the P index, the program must know conservation practices that are used in your field. For my example, there are terraces and grass waterways. Next, enter the distance from the center of your field or management unit to the nearest channelized flow, such as creeks, streams, or a road ditch. In my case, there is a treed waterway that runs into a neighbor's field, and there is nearly always water in this area. So I measured from the center of the field to that area, which is about 440 feet. There is little to no filter strip, so therefore I select 0 to 10 feet. Because I've not calculated the Russell 2 value for the farm, I'm going to leave the sheet and reel erosion estimate unchanged. If you have contacted NRCS or have otherwise obtained the Russell 2 value, you should enter that value into this box here. Note though that if you are using the Russell 2 value, you should not enter the manure component above because that's already figured into the Russell 2 value. The whole field is 113 acres, so I've entered that number into the ephemeral erosion box and clicked to use the ephemeral erosion estimator. When on the ephemeral page, you have two options. One is to measure the ephemeral gullies. The other is to estimate the ephemeral erosion based on data you've entered previously, which is option two. I'm going to use the erosion estimate by clicking on the Use This Estimate button under the option two. This automatically enters the estimated tons of soil lost in this field annually and directs you back to the Nebraska P-Index page. This particular field does not contain gullies that cannot be filled in by regular tillage, so the gully erosion boxes can be left empty. This completes the P-Index for this field. We have reached the conclusion that the risk of phosphorus loss in this field is low. To see the recommendations based on your P-Index, click on What Does My P-Index Mean? A pop-up will appear with the recommendations. It will automatically disappear or you can click OK. To record your findings, you can click on Add Result to Report. You will be taken to a report page where you'll see the information you entered in a different, more printable form. An alternate analysis for this field could be done using the worst soil type and slope in this field. If that analysis still finds that there is a low risk, you can utilize that p-index rating for the entire field. Let's see how that analysis works out. Click on the Back to p-index button. By using that button, the option box is emptied and the run number is changed. This time I will enter worst soil and slope. In the case of this field, the worst soil type is an eroded Nora silt loam with 11 to 17 percent slopes and happens to have a map unit of 6750. I'm going to assume that the soil test is the same for this smaller area, but ideally you would have run a separate soil test. The manure application and the cultural practices won't change, but looking at our map shows that we need to adjust our distance to water. 
By my measurements, the distance from the center of this particular soil type to the waterway is about 340 feet. And when we change the soil type up above, we need to adjust our acres to reflect that soil type. In this case, the field contains 3.1 acres of this particular soil type. And because of the changes in the soil type and the number of acres, we need to re-estimate the ephemeral erosion by clicking on the ephemeral erosion button and using the use this estimate button again. You'll see that there is a pop-up on your screen that shows that you're near a limit for a risk class and you should use the Russell 2 value. Go ahead and click OK. Once that's done, a new p-index has been assessed. Without using the Russell 2 value though, you can see that the result is still low so we can use the same recommendations for the whole field. Thank you for tuning in to this tutorial. If you have more questions about the Nebraska P-Index, please contact Leslie Johnson at leslie.johnson at unl.edu.